Good Sunday morning and welcome to the historic Rush Metropolitan AME Zion Church in beautiful downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. We welcome you to our virtual worship. Come and be filled with the Holy Ghost as we partake of the biblical bread of life. We believe that a breakthrough is right around the corner and we hope you enjoy this virtual Rush experience. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Shall we pray our prayer of invocation? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. God, we thank you that you wrote our names on your wake-up list one more time so that we can give your name the praise one more time. And so, God, we ask that you come into the midst of this service. Have thine own way and move like never before in the hearts of your people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so glad that God has given us the ability to be here today. God has blessed us to see another day. And I know that we know that God is with us. Amen. So we're going to talk about this song today that we've sung many times before. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Aren't we thankful that the blood was applied to our hearts today? Brother Melvin's going to sing that song for us. And then we're going to go into another song. But this is going to be our morning hymn, Down at the Cross. Whoa! 
at the cross where my Savior died, that's an appropriate song because we know Jesus died for all of us. And when the blood was applied to our hearts, we said, glory, glory, since I've laid my burdens down. Now, what is a burden? A burden might be a workplace. A burden might be your boss. Sometimes a burden can be your kids. But I'll tell you what, God is going to give you the ability to lay that burden down at his feet. And so we're going to sing that old Negro spiritual, and we're going to rejoice that God has laid, allowed us to lay our burdens down. worship experience uh, we are at this time just want you to turn to the person nearest you and just say I love you and if there's nobody around you would you just speak to yourself and say self I love me amen because we have to remember how to love ourselves and if there's someone around you would you just not just say I love you but show your love by embracing that person just give them a big old hug and if there's nobody around you would you just hug yourself that's right amen praise the Lord we're so glad that you again have tuned in to this experience at this time we're going to have our announcements and then our music ministry is going to come back and bless us as we prepare to hear a word from the Lord. Good morning, Rush Metropolitan. Here are your morning announcements. All meetings will be done via conference call. Please use 339-207-8628. Monday, July 13th, the worship committee will meet at 6 p.m., followed by the steward board meeting at 7 p.m. Tuesday, July 14th, Tuesday morning Bible study at 11 a.m. will take place via conference call. Wednesday, July 15th, virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. 
to participate, please go to zoom.com and input the meeting ID 556-977-4267. You can also join through conference call by dialing 1-929-205-6000. Nine nine, and use the same meeting ID. Thursday, July 16th, prayer call at noon. The Deaconess Board will lead us in prayer. Due to the coronavirus, office hours have been reduced. A mobile office number has been created for the church. The number is 919-822-2174. Please know that we are doing everything we can to stay connected and meet the needs of the congregation. This concludes our morning announcements. I wanted to take a moment to share with you how you can be able to sow into the ministry of Rush. We're working with the mobile app Givelify. It allows you to give through your mobile device. All you have to do is download the Givelify app once you download the app, type in our church's name, Rush Metropolitan, and you'll be able to give. It's just that simple. Again, welcome to the virtual Rush experience. Now let's get back to worship. So Jesus has died on the cross for our sins. And what that has done for us is made a way for us. Through all the trials and tribulations and the toils and the snares, God is a way maker. He is a miracle worker and he is our promise keeper. And so we're going to sing to him today and we're going to say way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Wait. 
if you will join with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter. We begin at the first verse. I'll be reading from the Common English Version of the Bible. It says this, Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the lake, to the region of the Gerasenes. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out of the tombs. This man lived among the tombs, and no one was ever strong enough to restrain him, even with a chain. He had been secured many times with leg irons and chains, but he broke the chains and smashed the leg irons. No one was tough enough to control him. Night and day, in the tombs and the hills, he would howl and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from far away, he ran, knelt before him, shouting, What? Have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. He said this because Jesus had already commanded him, unclean spirit, come out of the man. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He responded, Legion is my name because we are many. They pleaded with Jesus not to send them out of that region. A large herd of pigs were feeding on the hillside. Send us into the pigs, they begged. Let us go into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission. So the unclean spirits left the man and went into the pigs. Then the herd of about 2,000 pigs rushed down the cliff into the lake and drown. For just a few moments, I want to preach from this thought, it happened to me. It happened to me. Would you pray with me? Spirit of living God, we ask now that you would decrease the flesh of your servant and increase the spirit. Let the words of your servant's mouth, the meditation of your servant's heart, be acceptable in thy sight that show people be edified in power to know that they too can do the impossible through the power of your son, Jesus the Christ. Allow us through this word to leave this worship experience better than what we came. In Jesus' name we do pray that the people of God say, Amen. This morning, I have come to the realization that we live in a society where it seems like we only care about things that seem to touch us. We will often be on an opposing side or even take an indifferent attitude towards a situation until it touches us. And it shouldn't take something happening to you for you to be sensitive to the real issue of life. It shouldn't take you being homeless to care about homeless people. It shouldn't take you losing your job for you to care about joblessness. It shouldn't take you getting the COVID-19 virus for you to care about putting on a mask. It shouldn't take an interaction with racists for you to understand that there is still racism. It shouldn't take any of that, we should be able to hear the experiences of others and understand that it could happen to us. And we should be fighting against these social injustices, but instead we often sit in our places of comfort because it hasn't happened to us. As we look at what takes place in this country, I need us to understand what makes the whole George Floyd tragedy even worse than, than the police officer who kneeled on his neck 
people who crucified this man for his past. I mean, a man who was killed by those who were supposed to protect him. And the first thing persons began to do was dig up his criminal record. We have Brianna Taylor, whose killers have yet to be arrested. No one is even putting her name now on the news. And so we have a young black woman who was killed and the silence is what seems to be killing her all over again. And see, some folk don't understand that we are traumatizing people all over again. Here we are in the midst of a pandemic and we have been asked to wear masks in public and people acting like that's a crime because those people are trying to support the narrative that COVID-19 is a hoax. It's not that serious. We need to understand we are traumatizing families who have had to bury loved ones with this disease. You are traumatizing people who are recovering from this disease. Could you imagine the families who have had to bury loved ones who didn't get to have a normal funeral service are listening to people who say COVID-19 isn't that serious? Could you imagine people who are in quarantine right now who have to watch people being interviewed in the media who continue to be careless and not wear masks because they think it's it's not that serious and all I can say is can we stop the trauma can we pause for a minute and understand that this work is not about just you but we all have to live in it together and see I talked about this in Bible study this past week when you understand the ministry of Jesus it's about our calling our attention to humanity to help us to understand that we are in this thing together that when one of us is hurting we all hurt and we need to understand that just because things haven't happened to you doesn't mean it won't it see don't get comfortable just because certain things haven't touched you you're not immune from the challenges of a life there are things in this life that will indeed touch you there are things in this life that will grab hold of you and will not let you go and so I need us to understand that while you seem to be good now please understand it can happen to you there are people right now who are watching and listening who have that testimony persons who have had to sit through struggle and go through struggles that they didn't ask for things happen persons have a testimony where they were minding their own business and their whole life got flipped upside down and when you look in the text that's what we find in the text, it says this, that this man has an issue. He has a problem. His problem is that he is possessed. Now, I need us to understand. We need to catch this. We don't have the background of how he became possessed. The only thing we know is that it just happened. Now, please understand, being possessed means that you have been taken over, that you have lost control. And I don't need us to sit with this because here we have a man whose life has been hijacked. His life has been taken over by the enemy. He no longer had control over himself. Could you imagine if this man was an upstanding citizen, but his life was hijacked? And see, I need us to understand, see, while wow, there are those out there that can testify it happened to me, there are those out there who are watching and listening who don't get it because you're saying, well, that happened hasn't happened to me because I pray. I, I study my word. I go to church. I'm active in the church. I, I'm kind to people. I do everything I'm supposed to. Things like this happen to people who are not living like they're supposed to. See, that's what some black people are saying about the protest against police brutality. There are black folk who believe that those who have been 
killed didn't listen to the officer. They didn't comply with what was asked. And so therefore, you can't blame the officers for what they have done. But can I tell you, let it happen to your child. Let it happen to your brother or your sister. Let it happen to your friend, your best friend, your bosom buddy. And see how you feel here. We see a man in the text where we are not given any indication that he deserves what he's going through but it just happens to him what you need to understand is that there are things that will happen that you don't deserve things will happen that just don't seem fair but they happen and so could you imagine that this man is going through something as his life is hijacked he understands that while he's going through this that his reputation is being ruined while he's going through this his future remains uncertain because for this man it seems like there is no hope and so this man lives like this for days his, his life was hijacked but this is what I need someone to understand look at the text the text says Jesus shows up Okay, that may not be much uh, if you haven't been through nothing, but those who are in a struggle know what happens when Jesus shows up because Jesus' presence provides hope in the midst of despair. Here this man was probably thinking his life was going to be over. Maybe this man could have crafted his last will and testament to prepare for his demise, but Jesus shows up over the scene. And listen, I don't know, maybe you haven't been there where all hope seemed lost but just when you're about to throw in the towel, Jesus shows up and you started praising before Jesus did anything. See, some of us understand that before the Lord did anything, we just began to celebrate God for showing up because the Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. And so listen, the fact that the Lord showed up is something that makes me want to give God the glory. But here's what I need you to catch. When Jesus shows up, you have to understand the scene of the area. Jesus is stepping in to an unclean place because please understand the man is deemed unclean by virtue of him being possessed the tomb deemed unclean and there was a pig farm which was also unclean but Jesus shows up anyway somebody needs to catch this this morning that the Lord will show up in the midst of your situation regardless of how messy it is this is for the real traitors out there who understand that the Lord wasn't afraid to step in my mess I need some real folk out there who can just take a moment and say God step in your mess when there were some other folk who ain't gonna be bothered the Lord step in your and you all say thank me to God that said a God that sits high and looks low and he will yes he will he'll step alright so Jesus arise on the sea and we find the text says that this man comes out of the tombs. All right, here it is. I need you to understand there is a possibility that this man had a home. And when he is possessed, he's forced to leave that which he knows and go live among the dead. Now understand the tombs were seen as unclean and so this man's lives in a place that represents who he has become, but not who he is. 
Somebody missed it. He's possessed by the enemy and he has to live in a place that represents who he has become uh, but not who he is. And see, some of us, that's our testimony. You got so much going on. Uh, the enemy is messing with you uh, to the point where uh, you're not living for who you are. Uh, you're living based upon where you are. Somebody still missing it. Where you are and who you are are two different things. Where you are is temporary. Who you are is eternal. And see where you are is based upon the circumstances of life. Sometimes you have no control over where you are. Just like the man in the text. He was in the tombs. He had no control over where he was. But who you are is a different thing. Who you are is what God placed on in the inside of you. Who you are is what God has spoken over you. Who you are is what God has anointed you to be. Who you are has nothing to do with where you are. And someone needs to hear me because you've been forgetting who you are because of where you are. God wants you to remember who you are uh, so you can get out of where you are because uh, when you remember who you are, you can step out of where you are. Look at the text. The man sees Jesus uh, and he comes out of the tombs uh, because the presence of Jesus uh, begins to help this man uh, remember who he is come here Lion King some of you remember the movie the Lion King in the movie how oh, we see the young prince Simba is living the good life with his buddies to mold who's a meerkat and Pumba who's a warthog he's living there eating bugs living with his friends having a good time he put down the crown left all that behind but one night, uh, our old Rafiki uh, connects Simba with his father uh, and he has a conversation uh, with his daddy Mufasa. Uh, and Mufasa says to Simba, uh, remember who you are. Uh, I just came to let somebody know uh, that you've got a heavenly father uh, that just wants to remind you uh, who you are. Uh, who you are uh, is not where you are. Uh, and you are saying thank Thanks be to God that I just forgot for a second. I lost my mind. But thanks be to God, He's helping me to remember who I am. I am somebody. Why? Because God said so. And I need you right now to look at where you are. Go get your bags. Pack up your bags. And remember. But I won't be here long because the Lord will. The Lord will. The Lord will. Yes, He will. The Lord will. He will take you where you call. Well, listen, as we look in the text, we find now three things I want to point out. When you understand. It's happened to me. The first thing we find is they can't see you. Look at the text. The text says that no one was ever strong enough to restrain them. Even with a chain, he had been secured many times with leg irons and chains, but he broke the chains and smashed the leg irons. The text says no one was tough enough to control him. All right, let's look at this. People have spent more time restraining this man because all they could see is the demon possession. They could not see the man. And let me just help someone out. The issue you're having right now is that there are people who can only see what you're going through, but they can't see you. 
And see, some people can only see your struggle, but they can't see you. They can only see your pain, but they can't see you. And it's evident in the text because they saw this man as a threat because of his demonic possession, but they couldn't see this man. And here it is, when people can only see your problem, they do what's best to protect themselves versus what's best for you. Someone needs to hear me. They locked this man up because it was best for the people. They chained this man not because it was best for him, but it was best for them. And see, here it is because people can just see your issue. They're doing things to protect themselves from you. But here it is the text says that no one was strong enough to control this man. So here they were, kept trying to help themselves by shackling this man. But he kept breaking out. In, in essence, the people were creating more issues because they were treating the surface and not the source. I see the surface was this man's seemingly violent behavior. The source was his being demonically possessed. I see some people only wanted to deal with the surface because they don't want to spend time getting deep. That's why nothing had done or they had done was working because they only wanted to deal with the surface and not the source. And see someone has a testimony that says I had people around me who only want to deal with the service issues but not the source of my issue because the source of my issue was too much for people to handle and see that's why you got to call on Jesus because Jesus doesn't come for the surface he comes to deal with the source somebody needs to hear me when you call on Jesus Jesus is not going to do what everybody else has done. Jesus is going to go to the source of the issue. And there are some people out there that can testify that when I called on Jesus, I was able to understand that while everybody else had touched one sense of the issue, when the Lord touched the source, everybody else was dealing with the surface. But the Lord touched the source. And somebody out there want to say thanks be to God that I found out that the Lord is in a back of surface deliverance. But the Lord goes to the source of the problem. And somebody out there can testify I'm here today because the Lord got to the source of my problem. But listen, not only do we see in the text when it's happened to you uh, that they can't see you, but also you can't save yourself. Look at the text. The text says that the man, again, is in the tombs. He is chained, but he keeps breaking out. But look in the text. It says the man is in the tombs in the hills and howled and cut himself with stones. Hear me now. The man can't stop himself. The man can't quit. He keeps hurting himself. The man uh, cannot save himself. And this is for uh, some real people. I need you to understand that you can't save yourself. Someone needs to hear me. There are some things that you can't do alone. Uh, there are things that you are not going to be able to make it through by yourself. And see, your issue is, is that you have spent more time trying to save yourself instead of calling on the Savior. See, there are some situations that no matter how much you try, you can't do it on your own. This man was causing damage to himself and he couldn't stop. And this is what I need someone to catch. Whatever your issue is, recognize the self-help recovery is not going to work in this season. You need something else because catch this now. Look at the text. The man is not weak. 
The man is very strong because he's able to break the chains. Nobody is able to hold him down. So his strength is not a problem, but he still can't save himself. And this is for every person who thinks they're strong enough to save themselves. You've got to understand that no matter how strong you are, you just know that you can't save yourself. And so you've got to learn to let Jesus help you because when you let Jesus in uh, something can begin to happen. Uh, Jesus is able to do uh, what you cannot do. Uh, and listen can I help somebody? Uh, calling on Jesus uh, is not a weakness. Uh, I know some of us uh, have refused to call on Jesus uh, because you think calling on Jesus uh, is showing that you are weak. Uh, but calling on Jesus uh, doesn't display weakness. Uh, it shows strength because it shows you're smart enough to recognize that what I'm dealing with. I can't do it by myself. And I need some folk out there who understand not trying to save yourself when you're going to spend the time to learn that Jesus is all that you need. Why are you spending time trying to help yourself when the Lord is still a savior? Why are you trying to claw yourself at the hole you dug when the Lord is able to save you? I need some folk out there to understand that the Lord is there and available to save you. How do you know he's available to save you? But one day when I was sinking deep in sin, from the people's store very deeply stay within making the rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now save and I it was love it was love that lifted me it was nobody it wasn't it wasn't my daddy, it wasn't my uncles, it wasn't my aunties, but it was the Lord that picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. He is, yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, he is, I say. But listen, look at the text. Not only do we understand when it happens to you that they can see you, you can save yourself. The last thing we see when it happens to you, uh, Jesus can set you free. Look at the text. Again, now we find Jesus who is on the sea. And when the man saw Jesus from far, away, he ran and knelt before him, shouting, what have you to do with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, swear to God that you won't torture me. He said this because Jesus had already commanded him, unclean spirit, come out of the man. Catch this man. Now the man comes to Jesus, knowing that Jesus and the demons can't exist together. That the de demons cannot remain in Jesus' presence. So the man realizes that he would suffer if Jesus allows it. So he doesn't want to go through any more pain. And so he asks Jesus not to torture him. The man is basically saying to Jesus, I've been through enough. I don't want to go through anything else. But look at this. Jesus has a conversation with the man and says, what is your name? The man says, Legion is my name because we are 
many. And I need someone to catch this. This man has go been going through and experienced more than what people realize because he wasn't possessed by one spirit, but my many spirits. So all this time, this man had been wrestling uh, with multiple demons. All this time, this man had been living with different demons who had hijacked his life. And it took Jesus to bring this to our attention. Because Jesus, I believe, wanted us to understand that this was not a normal case. But look at the text. The text says uh, that when they give their name, the spirits plead with Jesus not to send them out of the region. And they beg Jesus to send them into the pigs. And so the spirits leave the man and enter the pigs. And then the herd of pigs, the Bible says, rush down the cliff into the lake and drown. Okay, here it is. I want you to catch this. This man is delivered from the possession of the spirits. But watch now. He is also set free from them returning. Someone needs to hear me because the same spirits that possessed him are the same spirits that they find themselves drowning. In other words, Jesus sent the spirits back to where they came from. Someone needs to hear me because Jesus did just bring you out but he made sure that what you were in you didn't go back to I know I got to go but I wonder if there is anybody out there who can just take a moment and just testify that the Lord delivered me that he set me up so that what I was dealing with I wouldn't have to go back to but when the Lord delivered me he closed the door by Behind me, and somebody out there ought to say thanks be to God that the door I walked out of, the door for my deliverance, was the door the Lord closed behind me. And there are some folk out there that can testify that you look at what I came out of. You would have thought I made it, but I'm so glad that not only did I make it, I'm so glad that the Lord set it up and that what had me could no longer touch me. I know somebody out there has got a praise on their lips to say the Lord brought me out. But when he brought me out, he set me up so far oh, that I can look back and see where I've been. But when I look back and see where I've been, I recognize that where I've been and where I am now, there's a great distance that God has separated me from where I used to be. Somebody just that place is sad that God bless you so much that when you look back over your life, there's a distance from the things that had you. There's a distance from the things that had you bound. But the Lord, when He delivered you, He wanted to make sure that what you were in would not touch you again. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I serve a God that will ensure that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm so glad that I serve a God that will wipe every tear from me. I'm so glad that I serve a God that knows how to turn it. I'm just not in the tail. I'm so glad. And the God that still, yes he is, yes he is, he still, he still, he still able. And I know somebody out there has got a testimony. You say it happened to me, the struggle happened to me, the pain happened to me, the brokenness happened to me. But here's the thing I need you to understand. That whatever's happened to you, God's gonna fix it. Somebody 
is the place that I need you. Shout for joy. And what's happened to you? God is going to fix it. I need some real praises who can just testify that what the Lord is going to do is going to be greater than what you're in right now. I need to believe it. I need to claim it. I need to speak it. Cause yes, the Lord. Yes, the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. He's not finished. I'm through preaching. Would you just bow your heads right where you are? Here it is. Listen, I need you in this season to trust the Lord. I understand you're going through so much in your life. Challenges on every side. But here it is. The Lord is still able. I saw this morning, maybe you're out there, and you just need prayer. If you're right now, text the number at the bottom of your screen. Somebody right now will join with you in prayer. Maybe you're out there and you don't have a relationship with the Lord. If you text the number at the bottom of your screen, somebody is going to reach out to you to help lead you into a relationship with the Lord. And maybe you're out there and you don't have a church home. You just have it connected with the ministry. But today, the Lord's calling you to be a part of the Rush experience. If you're out there and that's you, just text the number that's at the bottom of your screen. Somebody will respond and lead you into the fellowship of Rush. Would you just join with me as we pray. Spirit of living God, we want to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for just being who you are. We thank you, Lord, for how you have blessed us over and over again. God, there are those out there who can testify, I was in something that I didn't think I would make it out of. But you showed up right on time. And then there, there are persons right now, God, who are calling on you because they know who you are. They know what you can do. But they know somebody who's struggling. God, would you touch that person, that individual right now? Would you let them know you haven't forgotten about them? You haven't left them? But instead, Lord, you're still working on their behalf. We pray, Lord, for everything that's happening around this world and especially our country. God, we need peace. God, we need healing in this land. And we know, Lord, only you can do what needs to be done. So, Lord, we pray that your spirit that your spirit would touch the wounds of our society that your spirit would bring all people together that your spirit would help us to end the injustices that are plaguing our society Oh, we know and we believe that this can happen because we know that with you all things are possible. God, we say thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And yes, even what you're doing right now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say,
we're grateful to you joining us this morning. We're getting ready to go. But as we get ready to go, we always close with the affirmation of faith. And so right, right where you are, would you join me in saying together the affirmation of faith? Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, our Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.